Hey, what's going on YouTube people? I'm gonna make a quick little uh, informational video here on the Garmin GNS 530 and the Flightstream 210 integrating with uh, ForeFlight on your iPad. So I'm gonna show you how to set up the 530 so that your um, iPad can read it with uh, via Bluetooth, which uh, you just aren't a lot of videos on the internet that show this. <laughs> and uh, Garmin has dropped the ball on the Flightstream 210 user manual. There really isn't one. Uh, so this is for our rental pilots, students, instructors, and anybody else that could benefit from this. So quick video. Number one, um, how do you get Flightstream 210 uh, set up via Bluetooth to your iPad? And number two, how do you use it in flight to interface between the iPad and uh, the Garmin 530? So two parts, here we go. All right, quick tutorial here on how to pair your iPad, specifically for flight, with the Garmin 530 GPS via the Flightstream 210. So on the GPS, we're on the navigation chapter, go over to the auxiliary chapter. On the far right, there's a new page called Connext. Under Bluetooth status, you can a cursor in here, right? Cursor in to select and then enter. And you'll see paired devices. Right now there presently are none. On your iPad, you're going to go into your settings. Okay, there you go. And uh, when we're in this menu here, that is when you will see the option for the Flightstream 210 pop up. If it doesn't, I would recommend just cycling on and off your Bluetooth. You get a pair request here. You'll also get a pair request up on the unit. So enter to accept that pair request. And then you will see your iPad name pop up here in just a moment under paired devices. Daviator's iPad. Uh, you can have up to six devices on here at a time, I believe, that are paired. So if you see this is maxed out, then you may need to uh, repair your device. If you see my iPad on here, Daviator's iPad, uh, do not remove mine or death will be imminent. So if you have one that you need to remove, you can Go into this menu, cursor in, into the menu, scroll down with the uh, inner knob, bigger knob, and you can hit clear, and it will say unpair device. Yes, and that will delete it from there. Takes a moment. Uh, on your iPad, though, if you have come to the airplane and your iPad is not in the list, but it still shows the Flightstream 210, it often will not connect. You're gonna have to go in here and forget this device and that will start that process over again of being able to repair the device to your uh, iPad. So if you've come in here and someone's kicked out your iPad, you're gonna have to go through this forgot device process. And uh, I would recommend probably also then cycling on and off your Bluetooth option here. And then we should see that pop up here to uh, repair. If not, you may just have to, there it goes. So I'm gonna repair that. There's my prompt on the screen. There's my prompt on the iPad. And then my iPad should pop up here as one of the paired devices. And that is it. Once again, don't delete mine. Delete anyone's but mine. <laughs> That's how that process works. Very good. All right, so we're sitting here with the Garmin 530 and we want to go on a trip. We're sitting here with our iPad. We want to plan a little flight from Owen Sound to Sudbury. So yeah, we could just get into the Garmin 530, go into the flight plan, punch a whole bunch of clicks in here and we can make it happen. Or we can save some time with the ForeFlight integration with the Flightstream 210 and just send what we have on ForeFlight to the panel. So the whole key here is saving time, saving clicks, and um, also um, synchronizing, right? Synchronizing what you're doing on the GPS with what you're doing on ForeFlight, which in IFR is, uh, obviously very important. It's very helpful to be having everything kind of streamlined. So uh, we made a trip here from Owen Sound to Sudbury. We want to send this to the Garmin 530 very simply. Look for this little symbol here with the airplane with the uh, parentheses around it. Okay, so when you tap on that, you have two options. You can load from panel or you can send to panel. In this case, we are sending this plan to the panel. When I click on send to panel, what we'll see is a message will pop up here. If we check that message, this is gonna tell you to go to the flight plan page and import the flight. Okay, so in the flight plan uh, chapter, we now have three pages. Traditionally, there's two pages. There's your current flight plan, save flight plans, and now is the third page. 
using the Connects, Connext FPL import. So Connext is a Garmin product. We're kind of bypassing that a little bit with ForeFlight. We're not using the Garmin Pilot app, we're using ForeFlight. But this is where all the things will go when you send them to there. So you're going to cursor in, select the one that you want, and then one more enter to activate it. And you'll get your line drawn already. So your activate leg is there. If it's slave to uh, a digital HSI, it'll auto slew your track there and everything is good to go. Oh, it's actually set to own sound. I must have had that backwards on here. Anyway, regardless. So that's how you send it. Very simple. And then on the flight plan, you can see that or on the uh, navigation page, rather, you can see that, right? Uh, so the other obviously big advantage on uh, using the 530 is that there's no um, rubber band option. You know, we're so used to touching on the screen. I want to touch this and move it. <laughs> 1998 technology uh, doesn't quite allow that, but uh, ForeFlight does. And so the nice thing is that we want to go around the bay. We're going to just grab that rubber band. We'll go via Collingwood Airport. Uh, there and then we'll maybe take it inland a little bit to some random uh, waypoint right and so that would be very hard to do on the 530 putting in coordinates you'd have to go to this map view and scroll in and do a whole bunch of cursors and it's kind of a real pain so uh, again very simply we've got this now we can just once again send that to the panel you can either um, hit this little guy here which just brings up this menu right or you can hit actually the send to if you want, send to panel, they both work the same. There's your message again. You can go into the message if you want, or you can just go right to flight plan because you know it's gonna be in there. And now we've got all of those extra little waypoints in there. You just might have to um, select the leg that you want, right? So right now it's got Owen Sound to Collingwood. Maybe that's the leg that you want, or maybe you wanted another leg. Uh, so uh, Owen Sound, OICM, because we're still coming from Sudbury down here. So you could uh, highlight whichever leg that you want with the menu activate leg feature and then that would you know, uh, load up whatever leg is the active leg that you're looking for. But very nice way to kind of rubber band around very quickly in flight and keep these two in sync. Uh, let's say we're flying along and we want to go direct to Sudbury. We can also send from here to the iPad. Now I believe this is an auto, uh, auto is there. So auto receive from panel. Having that checked on is really good because what will happen is uh, here I'll just try and show you both of these at the same time. If I just, uh, let's say we wanted to go direct to Sudbury at this point and pull that up from our flight plan here and activate that, we get a uh, next direct track is 010 and do you want to load this route? Yeah, we want to load that. And so that actually changes automatically on four flight. So now we've got our direct to path there. So keeping these two in sync, very simple. You're looking for this little symbol in the top corner here with the airplane, send to panel, load from panel. I recommend having the auto receive from panel on there. And again, everything goes into your flight plans into uh, page three of the flight plan chapter. And then you can load them from there. You can bypass the whole message system altogether if you want. It clears the message out once you go into there. So that's it. That's the functionality in flight. Very, very useful and a very fast time saving. And life is good. And the other thing, you know, you can create your all your flight plans the night before on this. And when you come into the plane, you just send it to the panel. Traditionally, you get into the airplane, you're going to flip the avionics master on and you're going to spend some time chugging away. You're going to save it to the catalog um, and then you're going to turn everything off, do your walk around, come back in, or you're going to fire up and you're going to be burning gas and burning time. And uh, it's going to take you a 0.1 or 0.2 flight time just to uh, get in a very complicated um, procedure there. And then sometimes in flight, you know, in IFR, it's uh, sometimes a lot easier to um, quickly drag or find waypoints in four flight than it is uh, in the 530. So that can be a handy feature of that too. Again, um, your uh, iPad is secondary sort of spatial awareness. This is your primary navigation aid. So make sure that this is always showing you where you wanna go. This is the key here, right? This is, this is your certified navigator. This is your spatial awareness picture. So make sure you're prioritizing you know, this as the key here. But uh, also, now you can integrate and keep things synchronized very nicely between the two. And look at that, we just got our new PFD G5, dual G5s, so that's pretty exciting. Anyway, off to a tangent. That's it for uh, how to use that in flight. Oh, uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Did you know that the Flightstream 210 can send AHARS information to your iPad? So the Flightstream 210 has Attitude Horizon reference system built in and an internal GPS as well. So you can get 
the attitude of the aircraft and the altitude, speed, all that good stuff that you would normally need like a Stratus or a Stratus 2 or some of the other Garmin products to get. But you can get it through the uh, Flightstream 210. So if you have four flight with a synthetic vision option, oops, then you're just going to basically touch this button at the top here and then open that up and it will catch the data from uh, the Flightstream 210, which is in behind the Garmin. I don't know why I keep pointing to that, something to look at. In behind there is a little box that uh, sends the data to here. So yeah, AHARS information. So you don't need to carry the Stratus or the Stratus 2 anymore. Although there's no ADS-B information, which is what we use the Stratus 2S for ADS-B in, so we can see other local traffic, which is handy. But still pretty cool to have a backup uh, attitude indicator here on the iPad, just with the built-in Flightstream 210. You can also get some other um, products that will allow you to pull up weather as well. The Flightstream 210 can act as a conduit to pull up uh, some weather from Sirius XM and stuff like that. So anyway, just thought you would like to know that. All right, so hope you enjoyed that. That's a pretty much overview of the two functions. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but if you don't know, then you don't know. So I uh, hope you like that. Again, I'm Dave from uh, Owen Sound Flight Services, Chief Flight Instructor here, and I uh, hope you found that informational and educational. <laughs> Take care.